Safari Club recently released a report that dives deeper into the state of Web3 growth startups. The data reveals that more than $600 million has been raised across 71 companies focused on growth. Joining us now to discuss is Safari co-founder Justin Vogel. Welcome to the show, Justin. Hey, great to be here. Thanks, Shen. Great to have you here. Now, before we get into it, I have a disclosure. I did participate in a Safari cohort uh, just because I'm a DAO aficionado or enthusiast, actually. <laughs> I, I won't call myself an aficionado, an enthusiast. All right, Justin, let's talk about this report. Uh, what are some of the key takeaways? Is Web3 getting its marketing right? Some of the key takeaways um, are that uh, Look, when we look at marketing broadly, uh, things have changed a lot. The 2010s were really the golden age of digital marketing. Um, but by the late 2010s, the tides began to turn, uh, sparked by GDPR and a lot of other privacy legislation. Um, and with Web3 emerging in the 2020s, uh, we need a whole new Web3 growth tool stack. Um, and so that all these around 180 companies have dove into the space to uh, tackle this uh, question. Uh, so there are affiliate marketing companies, there are ad tech companies, ad networks, quests, loyalty programs, messaging, and more, uh, all coming together to figure out what does marketing look like in the future of our internet. And just to kind of take a step back so, so we can fully understand the context here, this is specifically looking at um, growth focused companies, I, I, I gather, as in sort of marketing outreach. Um, I, I saw stuff about loyalty programs. Um, and I think that's important because, you know, not only are we thinking about how the web is going to work advertising based, but we actually also want to get more people involved in, you know, Web3 blockchain uh, interface based stuff. How do you see um, some of the, the companies that you're covering here connecting to new users, people who have either, you know, no awareness of Web3 or, or no interest in it? Um, and, and how does that uh, edge of the growth map look, I guess? Yeah, the, uh, the segment that's primarily growing the pie today, I would say, is the loyalty companies. Uh, so these loyalty companies are primarily working with large Web2 brands to onboard their users into Web3 um, and engage them in the next generation of loyalty programs. Uh, so those are, are some of the areas that are targeting uh, Web2 users, but uh, all of these, these channels help target uh, Web2 and Web3 users on a variety of different channels, whether it's uh, more Web3 native users via Quest or uh, Web2 users on ad networks and um, other affiliate marketing channels. And uh, Justin, I, I want to hear your take on this. Do you think that like the tools that uh, crypto communities are currently using, like Discord and Telegram, are those cutting it? Or do you think that for there to be true success for this market and for this ecosystem, it's going to need to turn to uh, more Web3 native tools, such as Lens or other social networks? Yeah, I think that you know, the tools that are being used today are a good start. And we're also seeing consumers broadly engaging more on these what we call dark social channels like Discord, Telegram, Reddit, uh, and now ChatGPT for search as dark search. Um, so I think that we will continue to see uh, both Web3 and Web2 consumers engage in them more broadly. Uh, but I am more bullish, and I think that Threads is a good example uh, for what we've seen on the, the Web2 side uh, for uh users and consumers appreciating the composability of their audience. Uh, I think it'll be really interesting to see how Web3 social responds and rises um, as that becomes a more popular concept with Web2 consumers. Justin, you mentioned loyalty as one of the standout areas of Web3 growth right now. Any standout loyalty campaigns that came out when you were collecting this data? Um, one of the, the interesting ones that I, that I really enjoyed recently is 7-Eleven did a, a Web3 loyalty campaign, um, and they had a um, like widget where you're able to um, create your own slushy. Um, so which of the flavors, how much of each flavor, and then mint an NFT uh, of your uh, particular slushy combination uh, on chain. And they used a bunch of different, uh, more seamless, I'd say, uh, Web2 um, web2-esque flows to create that campaign. So that was cool to see um, just five minute flow uh, from scan the QR code to be able to mint that entity. 
We talk about these loyalty programs so often on the show, and I've yet to go out and participate in one. And I think it's because they don't exist in Canada. I think they're all in the U.S., and I stand to be corrected there, but I'm going to go out and find one and try it out. Justin, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks. Thanks for having me.